Well, hello there. My name is Jay with Server Matter and CompuMatter. First of all, thank you, Jarek, for this product. Uh, I've done a fair amount of research. Actually, ChatGPT led me to your product. And uh, from all that I can tell, it may very well be the best piece of backup software in the world. Uh, one of the things that I have run into is uh, documentation for specific problems, I just haven't been able to find what I'm looking for. And, and, you know, it's a big program, it's a robust program, and with com power comes complexity and all that. I haven't been able to find the solutions to some of these things, and I'm hoping this forum can answer them. Uh, this video might be of help. And um, my contribution to the community uh, is if, if, People on the community are able to help me get through these complexities and figure out how to get this thing working for my particular needs. I will create videos and post them on my server matter channel, which will uh, make people more aware and help people work their way through similar problems as we move down the line. Let me show you what I'm trying to accomplish. Okay, to start with, here is uh, a bit of a flow chart. We have a Linux server on it. We have a folder called SM data, which is where we keep the stuff that matters to us. We want to be able to back that up to the uh, another drive within the server uh, file system backup called back SM backups data. Uh, simultaneously, we want to be able to back up that same folder to a backblaze destination uh, B2 bucket. That is the immediate need. When it comes to viewing the data and restoring the data, we want the our customers that have these servers to be able to be in control of restoring their own data. So we want that to be done via a, a web UI environment. And so that's it in a nutshell. In the future, we would like to be able to have their individual desktops in their work environment also back up to the server's backups drive, if <laughs> get that out of my mouth, and to the Backblaze destination in a similar fashion. Although they'll be using the, uh, the desktop graphical user interface, and I would like for them to be able to restore to themselves the backups off of their own personal computers, though they won't be able to see any of the server stuff. Now, I have spent two to two and a half days trying to work through the software and I've had some successes but what I haven't had success is creating two distinct different repos one internal one external um, and not having them trip over each other in some way um, and I'm guessing the solution uh, lies in config files so let me show you these eight or so bash scripts that I've created to try and help me learn and you can perhaps see where the fix is on some of this. So I'm going to start off with SM Cobia Create. That is where we create the repo. We source a temporary file that has a bunch of our paths and passwords and all that in there. And then uh, for testing purposes, I'm going to delete uh, the backup repo, the files, the cache, all that kind of stuff. So we start off fresh every time and we can see what the results are. Then we uh, insert the command copy your repository, create file system, the config file, the log file, the bug levels, and so on and so on, and then we run the command. And we also echo out at the bottom the uh, any internal, since we've named the internal .log file as being the log, um, we take a look at that when this file is run to see if there's anything there. So to start with, let's go ahead and run that, that one command to see what it shows us. Okay, it completes, it doesn't throw any errors, so I assume the repo has been created. Uh, we don't really get success. I would like to see a nice fat green success here, but in the absence of that, it does say connected to the repo, so it makes that happen. And if I look at the contents of the uh, destination folder right here, the path, I can see at 22.06, that uh, files were created there. It is in fact 2206 right now. So we know that that did what it was supposed to do. So let's call that a success and move on to the next file. We're now going to run smcopia connect to connect to the repo that we've just created. Actually, let me just show you what's in there. Uh, same, we source the creds. We uh, 
build the command. Similarly, everything's variables. We use the config file once again, which uh, I think is the only way to separate internal from ex external and make sure that the generic repository dot config isn't what everybody everything's looking at. Okay, let's go ahead and run that. Okay, it says connected to repository, so we will consider that a success also. The next thing that we want to do is look at status. Um, I want to see what the status of the repo is right now. So let's take a look at what we're using for the status command. Copa repository status, log file, debug level, config file, password, similar type of stuff. And let's see what we get there. Okay, status looks good right down the line. Um, we certainly get a bunch of information back. Uh, this is not connected, probably is erroneous. I think I have these two inverted. And that will give us the result we want there. Okay, so it is connected. So it's been created. It's been connected. So I guess it's time, and the status looks good, so I guess it's time to run a snapshot. Let's take a look at what's inside there. Source the same creds, same directory, same passwords, all that kind of stuff. Um, within that file is the directories that we're going to be backing up from. Uh, they're annotated in there, so that's what that's all about. It parses those, gets us a list of what directories, and then it loops through them down here and runs the snapshot command on each one of them. I think I've only got one directory in that file for test purposes. It is the etc slash sm firewall directory. And the sm firewall is not active right now, so it's just fat. Empty directory, one file in it. Okay, we're gonna run the snapshot file. Okay, not enough time has passed since previous successful snapshot. We'll try again next time. Now, I purged, deleted the directories that would have had that information in there, so perhaps that information is being kept somewhere else. But I don't see any errors. And uh, so let's now take a list, get a list of our, our uh, snapshots. We'll let you have a look at what's inside of there. Similar access to the uh, file that has all the good stuff in it. We parse through the directories that have, uh, which will be the same directory, and, uh, and show us what those snapshots look like in theory. snapshot list it finds that one directory it doesn't show any data so that's a little confusing because the other one said um, too soon to do another this one doesn't return anything now if I do a snapshot list where is it no that one uh, didn't work because I didn't have the config file included I've just manually inserted this um, which instead of identifying a specific directory, I've just put list period. And it does give me some feedback. It does specifically show SM firewall and it does indeed show a date and time. So everything appears to be looking good. So that's all. I just wanted to share what I've been doing because I'm a newbie, I'm a novice, and I'm getting all the, whatever knowledge I have here just by scraping through posts and documentation. And I don't know if I'm doing things the right way, the best way, um, with the, if the initial intention is to have an internal, which I'm trying to get under control first, that is visible through the browser. And then, um, and then after we succeed with that, we'll move on to the external that's also visible with the browser. And I'd like to maybe get a dialogue going here that might be relevant to other people and uh, answer a few of the mysteries along the way. Please share your thoughts. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.